going on guys eric here for those of you that don't know me my name is eric and i'm on a mission to make sure that this mcat is easy as possible for you guys easy as possible okay i'm a certified mcat tutor in this video i'm not going to be doing a breakdown we're just going to go through the discrete questions on this practice mcat exam all right the more you practice the more questions you do the better you'll get it's that simple okay so we're going to go through these quick as always guys go through the questions first and write down your answers and then hear me you know go through the questions and making sure you get everything right okay so this is the first question read it on your own pause it if you need to write down your answer second question read it on your own pause it if you need to write down your answer third question pause it if you need to write down your answer 17 okay pause it if you need to write down your answer after you've done that you could play this video resume it and i'll show you guys how to get all these right Okay, so what are the formal charges on the atoms in the molecule below? Note, the molecule has not been labeled with overall formal charge and may have an overall formal charge that is zero or a value other than zero. There's a difference between formal charge and oxidation state. I hope you guys understand that. Now, formal charge, how do you find it? Very quick, very simple. All right, formal charge is equal to valence electrons minus dots plus sticks. Okay, that's how I do it. All right, so let's take nitrogen, for example. All right, so formal charge equal to valence electrons minus dots plus sticks. Valence electrons, how many valence electrons does nitrogen have? Nitrogen has five. You can look at the periodic table for that really quick. You just go here and you count one, two, three, four, five. Five valence electrons, boom, cool. Five valence electrons minus dots. How many dots does it have? Zero dots. All right, plus sticks, how many sticks we got? We have one, two, three, four sticks bonded to it. So we have four sticks. Do the math here, five minus four equals one. Therefore, the formal charge is positive one for the nitrogen. Eliminate anything that doesn't have positive one for nitrogen. Nitrogen is the second one. We can eliminate these two, but bam. Let's find the oxygen now. Let's find, let's say the third one here, okay? So let's do this for oxygen, formal charge, advanced electrons minus dots plus sticks. Okay, we're going through this quick. Uh, formal charge of, all right, advanced electrons for oxygen, just go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six, cool. Six, six minus dots, how many dots? How many dots we got on this oxygen? One, two, three, four, five, six, six dots plus sticks, how many sticks we got? We got one stick there. All right, do the math. When you do the math, six minus seven equals negative one. The formal charge on this oxygen is negative one. So three is negative one. Bam, bam, answer's A. <clears throat> a mass of 10 kilograms is dropped from a height of 20 meters. Ignoring air resistance, what is the maximum speed achieved by this mass? Cool, this is the conservation of energy here. All right, we're going from a height, we're going from potential energy to a speed, kinetic energy. All right, you guys should know how to do this. So this weighs, this rock weighs 10 kilograms. It's at a height of 20 meters, right? Yeah, 20 meters. Okay, gravity, we know it's gonna be 10 meters per second squared. How do you find the potential energy up here? Potential energy is equal to MGH, all right, MGH, mass 10. Gravity, 10, height, 20 meters, but bam, this potential energy is equal to 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 20 equals 2,000 joules, all right? Now, the potential energy is then converted to kinetic energy. So this is going to be converted to kinetic energy. So 2,000 joules equals kinetic energy. What's the formula for kinetic energy? 1 half mv squared. Bam. Multiply the half by both sides. Multiply by two here, 4,000 joules, bam, mv squared. Oh, we have the mass. I forgot to put it. The mass is 10 kilograms, right? 10? Okay, cool. 10 kilograms. All right, v squared, divide by 10. Get that v by itself, bam, 10, divide by 10. 4,000 divided by 10 is what? 400 joules, bam, v squared. Square root, each side, square root of 400 is what? 20, bam. 20 meters per second. That is the units for velocity. Bam. 
20 meters per second. Answer is B. Let's keep going. How many tetrahedral stereo centers are present in cholesterol? Picture below. Okay. What is a tetrahedral stereo center? That's just another another term for a chiral carbon. That's pretty much it. Okay. We're counting how many carbons are chiral. Let's start from the right here. Is this chiral? No. It needs to be bonded to four different substituents in order to be chiral. So this is a chiral. This is a chiral. This is a chiral because these two are the same. Okay. A chiral because we have two hydrogens. Therefore, it's not bonded to four different things. A chiral. A chiral. This one is chiral. It's bonded to four different things. This, 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 and a hydrogen. And I'm going to write a dash. I should do it over here. Okay. So we'll, we'll do it here. Fine. One, one chiral center. Let's keep going. This one we just did. This one is another chiral center. It's bonded to four different things. It's bonded to this here is different than this. Okay. It also has a hydrogen here and it has this whole thing that's bonded to up here. Therefore, this is another chiral center. Bam, two. Let's keep going. So we did this one. We're going to take a right here. This is a chiral. All right. It's bonded to two hydrogens here. This is a chiral as well. This one is chiral. It's bonded to four different things here. You can see it. So that's another chiral center. Bam, three chiral centers. Let's move up here. This is chiral center because it's bonded to four different things. Okay. Bam, another one, four chiral centers so far. Let's keep going. A chiral, A chiral, here, chiral center, here. This is another chiral center, okay? These two are chiral centers. I'll write two here to save time. Bam, bam, six so far. All right, we did these. This is A chiral. This is A chiral. It's bonded to three things, all right? Not four things. All right, you can see one, two, three. That's all it's bonded to is A chiral. This one is achiral. This one is chiral. Okay, bonded to four different things. Bam, it's another one. Six, I mean seven, my bad. So we did this one, we did this one. Okay, achiral, achiral. Bam, this one is chiral. Okay, it's bonded to four different things. What's it bonded to? It's bonded to an OH that's different from this R chain because this R chain has a CH3 coming out of it. And that's different from this R chain because this R chain does not have a CH3 poking out of it. And the hydrogen. That's four different things. This is a chiral center. In total, we have eight. Eight chiral centers. Answer is C. Bam. Keep going. The preferred ion configuration of many elements on the periodic table is determined by... Oh, that's easy. This is straight up Kant's interview, guys. All right. That's due to the nearest noble gas. They want to achieve their noble gas state. All right. And they want to do that by having the same valence electrons as this noble gas. Okay. That's pretty much content of you here. So this is elements will gain or lose electrons. So they have the same core electron configuration. No, not the electron configuration. They don't care about that. The electronegativity of the atom. No, we don't care about what's above it. Okay. The electron configuration of the nearest noble gas. Yes. Elements will gain or lose electrons until they have the same balance electron or configuration as is noble gas. That's correct. The relative stability of the nearest D subshell. That's wrong. Okay. We don't care about the nearest D subshell. Some, some don't even, um, some don't even fill their D subshell. Okay. Maybe they might have like a positive or a negative charge on them, but they're not filling it. So this is wrong. Answer is C. Now let's go ahead and check if we got everything right here. Let's check this. Okay. This one, A, that's what we put, right? Yep. That's A. B. C. Then what's this one? C. There's the explanation if you guys would like. C. All right. Bam. Okay, cool. We got all those right. Really quick, went right through it. I'm going to do this again for the next set of discrete questions. I'll drop the video in the link. As always, guys, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.